right, good morning and welcome to today's edition of Live with LAFD. My name is Margaret Stewart, Firefighter Margaret Stewart, and this morning we are going to be here with 20, Fire Station 27, and I'm going to turn around right quick so you don't miss this action. So today they're out doing some training. It's not often we get to train near Hollywood Boulevard because of traffic, so with the light traffic conditions, they're taking advantage to practice laddering to some of these buildings that uh, they don't normally get to. So this is the 35 foot extension ladder that they're placing up to the higher. You can see this building has two grades, the lower grade and the higher grade. So they've placed this ladder in action, tying off the halyard. We're out co coning off the street for safety. And now they're moving back to set up the aerial ladder for throwing. Equipment up on the ladder. We're gonna move around to the side here. They're acting as if this is a structure fire response. Good morning from South Africa, from New Hampshire, Columbia. Outstanding, thanks for joining us. We're gonna get a little closer here. You can see they're getting all of their gear and the equipment ready to go up the aerial ladder. The, app the apparatus operator, the AO, is the name for the person right here you see operating the aerial ladder. This is just training, let everybody know. Hello, Carmel from Detroit, from Delaware, North Carolina. Fantastic. Austin, Texas, thanks for joining us. So now they're extending the aerial ladder they're going to simulate a roof operation. So they're getting, we call those two rubbish hooks together a roof kit. We've got the uh, chainsaws. Uh, yeah, so CLO on our helmet stands for Community Liaison Officer. It's just to signify I'm not part of the frontline crew. I'm here as a public information element. So now they're heading up the aerial. And this is the captain too. He's now gonna join the crew and they're gonna go through a roof operation. So we're gonna head up, it's gonna be a little bouncy. Yes, public relation, that is what, okay. So you gotta bear with me while we get up the ladder here. You're gonna have kind of a bad view for a second. <laughs> As I get up here, Ooh, okay. Make sure I'm not caught up on anything. Sorry about that. All right, now we're up the ladder. And some people are asking why they're not wearing their turnouts right now. It's gonna be 91 degrees. So in order to keep safety as a, a factor, um, to be able to continue to train on, in the heat, they're using reduce, they're not going to full turnouts. All right, so we make our way up the ladder. And if you've never climbed the aerial ladder, then this is what the view is. Almost to the top. Just stop, give you a little picture. All right, heading up to the roof. You can see how, well, let me get off and I'll be able to show you better. You can see how the aerial does not touch the building, it's self-supported. So it's not actually touching or resting on the building, it's self-supported all the way down. Now they're up here talking through a roof, op roof operation how they would ventilate this structure. I'm not sure if you can hear that audio. Let me know if you can hear that audio. Okay, so here, it's a look at the top of the roof. This is actually a rooftop view of Hollywood. 
and you can see the rest of the crews down there joining in. Um, yes, for those who are asking, we are in Hollywood, downtown Hollywood. That's Hollywood Boulevard, right there. East to west, east to west on Hollywood Boulevard. So I'm going to switch around to the side so you can hear the apparatus operator. So what they're doing right now is just talking about the roof condition. Uh, the one who's speaking, you're asking, is the apparatus operator. So the one on the right um, is the apparatus operator. He's the one that drives the truck and he manages the roof operation. While the captain will be primarily looking for safety factors, he'll also be the incident commander in the truck until the battalion chief arrives on scene. So the AO, that person right there, is uh, basically the leader of the team until the captain comes up. So this firefighter here, Washington, this is his third house as a rookie. So he's um, close to finishing probation. And then these other two firefighters are uh, more seasoned members of the team. Yeah, we're not gonna ask questions right now. I know we love to, but I'm gonna let them do their operation and their training. Yes, the orange helmet back there. That's, that's the, what we call the Captain 2. The Captain 2 rides on the truck, and the Captain 1 is on the engine. So the Captain 2 is a higher rank, and they're the station commander when there's a truck in. So here we'll give you a little morning view of Hollywood. You can see, for those who aren't from the area, we'll give you a little zoom up. There's the Hollywood sign for you if you want a little screenshot. For those who have never seen the Hollywood sign, there it is. This is a very dense, dense area with lots of large buildings, lots of old buildings. You can see, um, I'm gonna come over here to this facade. We talk a lot about collapse zones and the dangers. So if you can see, it's a little, it's a little dark, but you can see how this facade is only held up by these bracings. So when there's a fire that compromises any of that, you have a possible collapse zone with that facade coming down. And uh, this rig over here, let me zoom in for you. That large rig that says urban search and rescue on the back, Task Force 27 is one of the task forces that has a search and rescue rig. So that has a lot of specialized equipment. So they have it out today. So members can practice driving it and getting trained on it. Uh, Josh is asking what color the fire chief helmet is. Our chiefs have white, so their helmets are white. Uh, yes, the Jimmy Kimmel, you can't quite see it from here, but it's, it's over to the right a little bit. And you can see, um, you know, we wear what we call passports, so the, you can tell from the helmet what company they're assigned to, so this is 27's. Um, so we're, ha we're getting the, the questions about wood ladders. We get that quite often. So I'll let you know that yes, we do use wooden ladders. I think I posted a picture of one earlier this morning for several reasons, a couple of them being they don't conduct electricity. So if when we're throwing the ladders by the power lines, that's a reduced hazard as well as we can repair them in house if they get damaged as opposed to metal ladders that would just have to be replaced. It's a long-standing tradition. San Francisco uses wood ladders as well. So now we have the rest of the crew making it up here. And here's a, I'll give you a little bit better, clear shot of the USAR rig. So that's the specialized rig that carries heavier, more technical equipment and, and just more of it. Physical rescue too, so the Hamultra system is um, 
plumb, we call it like plumb. It's, you just have to roll it right out. You don't have to hook it up. It's already connected. Um, there's additional rope rescue equipment, um, lots, of, lots of gear. Uh, somebody's asking, how long do you have to be in LAFD to drive in the back of the tiller truck? So that's the tiller member, and that is part, you, um, once you complete probation and you start moving into certifying in positions, that's the position you have to get certified, so you have to go through specific training to make sure you know how to do it, but that happens early on, so it's not something that you have to uh, promote into, it's training that happens in the field. Uh, someone's asked if we have a commander vehicle. If you mean this station has a battalion chief out of this station, they're not here with us right now, but yes, there is a uh, battalion vehicle. Let's see if we can. Hello from Cadet Smith, Station 81. Thanks for joining us. Let's see if I can mic him for you so you can hear what the AO is talking about. Okay, I don't think you guys can hear that very well. We'll catch up with him in a bit. We'll give you a little look down the, uh, down the aerial ladder. Uh, here's a look at the chainsaws that we use. We use still chainsaws, and they'll bring two up to the roof. Give you a look down the aerial ladder. Not a view too many people get. There's some people climbing up it. There you go. That's what it looks like climbing up the aerial. And you see, we step off to the side. You're not. It's this isn't the kind of ladder where you would come off the front. They throw. We call throwing a ladder. We place a ladder. So you place it so that you can step off to the side. And we would do what's called sounding the roof to make sure that the roof is safe under our feet. So they're bringing up the rest of the crew. So this is the engine crew and the rescue that are making it up here now. Climbing on up. Oh, I'm in the way here. And these are the roof kits I mentioned. Can you show us how you would sound? Could you do it? We'll have a uh, firefighter review show us a quick, what it looks like when we sound the roof. He's just simulating it because this is somebody's building. There you go. And that would be how they would check that the roof is secure as he walks on it out to the creates a pathway otherwise you have the risk of stepping down and if the fire has been burning and it's compromised the integrity of the roof from the underside that can give way and that's how you fall through the roof uh, someone's asking about our trucks if they're all american la france no we do have a mix in our fleet so now we got the rest of the task force up here Walking through. Let's see if I can get you mic'd onto the AO. Because I'm not going to hear the radio. Right? When uh, when I'm cutting, I'm running the side, can't hear anything. So I rely on you guys to, to listen to that. So at that point, I'll drop back, suit up if I need to, and you guys will, um, you know pull that and then um, if I'm happy where we're at we're in a good spot and I'm comfortable I'm gonna hand that saw to the to the tiller member and tell him keep cutting I'm gonna stand back I'll give I'll give my conditions actions and needs to, to cap tell him what I need if I need anything and then uh, I'll stand back and be that safety person until cap gets up once cap gets up then then if we can we'll go into a two saw operation okay um, so 
that's that's ideal for me that's how i'd like to do it if, if the conditions are right if it's a little sketchy or i'm not sure if we're not in the right spot i may hold on to the stuff for a little while longer right i'll say hey you know what this isn't the right spot or we'll i want to back up hey this is a little too close we'll, we'll back up a little bit and we'll start and, and go from there any questions on that no sir Okay, so hopefully you can hear a little bit of that. He's just talking about what they would do. So I'm going to see if we have some questions. Scroll back a little bit. And no, they will not be cutting on this roof. This is, there's no fire here. This is training. We're just up on top of this roof looking. Um, we call this like pre-fire planning. So we're familiar with the different, because as you can see from this view, there's all different types of roofs. So understanding what is on these buildings before we ever come up here is really helpful. If there's a fire, they're more familiar with it. Let's see, what other questions? Uh, somebody's asking how many people are assigned to a truck company. So we have the truck itself, the truck in the, we call it a pump, is an engine that travel together, that's six people. And then there's four people on, this, on the engine. So it's a 10 people for a task force is what we refer to it as. And then we also have the rescues here. So there's like 14 people total. Uh, all right, let me, I'll flip this around a bit here as they're standing and talking, see if we can get any more questions. Yep, rubbish hook, that's what that equipment is that we call it. Um, for those who are just now joining, my name is firefighter Margaret Stewart. I'm a little shaded here. Uh, I am in the public information, so I'm out here facilitating this for you. I'm not assigned to 27s. This is in Battalion 5 in LAFD, which is part of West Bureau. So we're in Hollywood right now, downtown Hollywood. Okay, let's see. Scroll back to so catch up. Uh, someone's asking if that's hazmat down at the bottom. No. So um, let me show you again. This is one of our urban search and rescue rigs. So that has specialized equipment um, that isn't carried on the trucks. And so they've brought it out today so they can have members practice driving it and getting certified on it. 27s is not a hazmat station for us. All right. We'll take a short break, come back to you live once we start the next operation. Let us know any questions you have and we look forward to it. Don't go far. We'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining.